Uh, welcome. This is part two as we explain how the shell finds your process and executes your process. You may recall in part one we talked about how the shell could execute a single process. Let's do something a little more complex. If you go to your shell and type in PS minus A and then what this is called is a pipe, pipe it to grep worker, what will happen is the PS command will list all the processes in a text format. It will pipe that text format to the input of the grep command. The grep command will search for the string worker and print out all the lines that has the worker. Go ahead and do that and see how that works. Now, what's happening under the covers? If you recall, last time we talked about how the shell would look into the path for the different processes. Here, though, we have two processes that are running, one piping its output to the input of the other. So something a little more complex is going on here. Let's draw it. Here's my shell waiting for the user to input the commands. And you type in PS minus A and pipe it to grep. The first thing Bash will do is do a fork and a wait, creating a process where we can execute either the PS or the grep. You'll see that's the grep going to execute here because we need two processes, two completely independent processes. One to execute the PS, one to execute the grep. And I need to take the output from the PS and pipe it to the input of the grep. How does this work? There is a system call called pipe. And the first thing that this process will do is it will create a pipe. So here I will write the system call done by that process, and we'll call it pipe P. P comes back as the pipe. Let's draw that. And the pipe is exactly what it sounds like. It's a pipe where I can put data in and read data from. And so there's a read side and there's a write side to the pipe. I'll draw it with two arrows, a read side and a write side to the pipe. The pipe lives within kernel memory. There's a chunk of memory outside of the process in kernel memory that's just stored like a mailbox or a pipe to put data in that could be read or written. So now we've created a pipe. What I want to do is create another process over here and pipe its output into the input of this process. We need to uh, understand another concept uh, called file descriptors, or the file descriptor table. Every process, when it starts, has an array of file descriptors. I'll draw it like this. This is metadata for that process that was created. The file descriptors point to open files, uh, open sockets, uh, possibly pipes, standard in, standard out. In fact, when you start every process, the first three file descriptors are set to point to standard in, standard out, and standard error. You may know these as C in, C out, and C error in C++. So 0, 1, and 2, 0 points to standard in. That's where the process reads text. 1 points to standard out. That's where a process writes text. And then 2 points to standard error. This is where errors are written. So if I would, in C++, do a CN to some integer x, I would be reading from standard in. It's just an object that wraps around that standard input. What I want to do is I want to <clears throat> take my read side of the pipe and attach it to standard in. And so first let me close the right side of the pipe. And I'll write this pseudocode where I'm taking the pipe and I'm closing the right side. Then let me copy over the read side of the pipe to standard in. There's a system call dupe2 whereby I would take the right read side of the pipe and copy it over to standard in, which is file descriptor 0. So what I've done here is close the right side of the pipe, and I've kind of redirected the inside of the pipe to standard in. Now, I'm ready to create the process that will run the PS, 
and so I call fork. And this creates another child process. That's the same fork. And then I wait. This process is waiting for the grandchild process, in this case, to finish. Okay. Because the child process is an exact replica of the parent process, the file descriptors get copied over, as well as the pipe. And so now this process has access to the same pipe. In this case, I want my standard out to write to the pipe, so it will go into the standard in of the process that's its parent. So I go ahead and close the read side of the pipe, and dupe to the right side of the pipe to standard out for that process. The read side gets closed, and the right side goes to standard out. So now any text that the process will write will go into the pipe and will be read by the previous process. At this point in time, I can go ahead and execute my PS minus A. So I do my exec of the PS minus A. Again, this is just pseudocode. You can use the man page to get the actual details of what the exec looks like. The PS minus A runs, the output goes into the pipe, and then I exit. At this point, this parent returns from the wait because its child has exited. I can now run my grep in this process. And it will take as its standard in what was in the pipe from the PS. When this finishes, this process exits. And the bash shell, which was waiting, uh, starts exiting again and asks for the next command. That's an example of how the pipe can take the input of one process and pipe it to, sorry, the output of one process and pipe it to the input of the next process. Thank you.